In this video, we're going to learn how to perform hypothesis testing for a population proportion. The method that we're going to use is called the p-value approach. I'm going to briefly explain the idea of the p-value approach, but it will make more sense once we do an example. In the introduction video, we learned that when we conduct hypothesis testing, we deal with two statements. One statement is called the null hypothesis and we denote it by H naught or H with sub zero. And the second statement we call the alternative hypothesis or H one. When we conduct the hypothesis testing for a population proportion, the null hypothesis H naught will always state that the population proportion is equal to a specific value. And then alternative hypothesis will state that the value of the population proportion is somehow different from the value indicated in H0. So it can be different, such as we just simply say it's different, so it's not equal to that number. Or we can say that population proportion is actually less than the one that's stated in in the null hypothesis, or population proportion is greater than the one stated in the null hypothesis. And that gives us three possible hypothesis structures. We're going to come back to them in a minute, but let me go back to explaining briefly the idea of the p-value approach. So we always start by assuming that the null hypothesis is true. So the null hypothesis, a population proportion equals a certain value, we assume that it's true. And then we determine how likely it is to obtain a sample of proportion like that, or anything more extreme, from a population whose proportion is well stated in the null hypothesis. And if we find that it's unlikely, then we reject the null hypothesis. In other, in other words, if we see that sample with this sample proportion is unlikely to come from this kind of population or from population with the given population proportion, then we do reject the null hypothesis. And that probability that I just described, it's called p-value. So p-value is the probability. How do we decide that it's small enough to reject the null hypothesis? Well, we're going to compare the p-value with alpha. Remember that alpha is called the level of significance and it is chosen before the sample data are collected. And it represents the probability of making a type 1 error. In other words, that it represents probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when in fact it's true. So that's the level of significance and all our examples it's going to give unto us from the very beginning. And again, this is how we make a conclusion with p-value approach. If p-value happens to be less than or equal to alpha, then we're going to reject the null hypothesis. And if p-value is greater than alpha, then we do not reject the null hypothesis. Um, as you remember, we never say that the null hypothesis is true. We never use that wording. We either say that we reject the null hypothesis or we do not reject the null, null hypothesis since we never know what the reality is. Now let's go back to three possible hypothesis structures. We already briefly talked about them. I didn't mention the names. Well, they're written here. The name depends on the alternative hypothesis H1, so if we use not equal sign, which means that we're stating that the population proportion is, is not equal or different from the originally stated population proportion. Well, what does it mean it's different? It could be less or it could, could be more, right? And that's why it's called two-tailed structure, because that's how it looks um, on the normal curve. By the way, why are we using normal curve here? The reason for that is because we know that sample proportions have normal distribution under certain conditions. So normal distribution is used for hypothesis testing um, for a population proportion. And yes, this is two-tailed structure. This, uh, the p-value itself represents the sum of the areas in the tails right here. 
I have to make a note that in this video I will be only showing calculator steps for hypothesis testing. Um, there's also a way to do it by hand using a formula and that's where those z values, they're called critical values, have to be calculated. So we will be doing everything using calculator in this video. So p-value will be calculated for us automatically. However, we still need to determine um, the hypothesis structure when we use calculator. So in this case, it's two tail structure. Left tail hypothesis structure happens when we have um, alternative hypothesis with less sign. In other words, we're stating that population proportion is actually less or smaller than the, the population proportion stated in the null hypothesis. And finally, the right tail structure is used when we have uh, the alternative hypothesis with a greater sign. So in other words, we're saying that population proportion is greater um, than stated in the null hypothesis. Since knowing the hypothesis structure is important, whether you do it by hand or on a calculator, we're going to start by practicing determining the hypothesis structure. I have a few examples here. Let's start with example one. In 1997, 46% of Americans said that they did not trust the media when it comes to reporting the news fully, accurately, and fairly. In a 2007 poll of 1,010 adults nationwide, 525 stated that they did not trust the media. At the alpha equals 0.05 level of significance, is there evidence to support the claim that the percentage of Americans that do not trust the media to report fully and accurately has increased since 1997? So it feels like there are a lot of information provided here, a lot of words. So we need to really find what we need from, from this paragraph. Well, we're looking for statements that correspond to the null hypothesis and to the alternative hypothesis. I know that we're only working with population proportion here, but pretty soon you will be given examples where you need to recognize what parameter you're working with, for which parameter you conducting hypothesis testing. So the other options is, um, are population mean or population standard deviation. So how do we know that we're working with population proportion here? Well, that percentage, 46%, that's the key, right? 46%, um, any characteristic of population given in terms of percentage indicates proportion. And in the very first sentence, it says that in 1997, 46% of Americans said that they did not trust the media when it comes to reporting the news fully, accurately, and fairly. Notice how in this sentence, population pro proportion equals to a specific value. Population proportion of Americans that did not trust the media was 46% statement that gives us the specific value of the population proportion is the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis we have cited here will always have an equal sign. And that's going to be the case for us. So P stands for population proportion equals, and here we always convert percentage to decimal. So 0.46. Now we have to find the null hypothesis. That's the one that provides statement that the value of population proportion is somehow different from 46%. So we have to look for keywords. Let's read again what it says. In, in a 2007 poll of 1,010 adults nationwide, 525 stated that they did not trust the media. So this is the description of the sample, right? Every time they're talking about the polls, it's, it's all about samples. So in that specific sample, out of 1,010 adults, 525 stated that they, that they did not trust the media. And if we continue reading, then it says that at a certain level of significance, is there evidence to support the claim that the percentage, well, it's same as proportion, of Americans that do not trust the media to report fully and accurately has increased since 1997. Have you noticed the keyword? Right here, has increased. That means that the number is higher than it used to be. Then 
how can we write it in short using mathematical notation? Well, we can say that population proportion is now, well, it increased. So it means that it's now more than it used to be. Well, it used to be 46%, 0.46. And now we say that it's more than that. So greater than 0.46. So that's the key word that makes us to use the greater sign. Now, as we set up the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis, we can talk about the hypothesis structure. So with the greater sign, it's the right-tailed structure. Right-tailed. Okay, well, let's do it one more time with, uh, with the second example. Here it says that in 2000, 58% of females, okay, right away I can see percentage, so I know that I'm dealing with proportion, population proportion. 58% um, of female aged 15 and older lived alone, according to the U.S. Census Bureau. A psychologist tests whether this percentage is different today by conducting a random sample of 500 females aged 15 and older and finds that 285 are living alone. Is there sufficient evidence at, the, um, um, at alpha equals point? one level of significance to conclude the proportion has changed since 2000. So let's first set up the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is where we use the equal sign, so population proportion equals, and we have to find sentence where we're given specific value for population, population proportion. 58%, that's same as 0.58. And the alternative hypothesis states that the value of the population proportion differs from, from the given in the null hypothesis, so it differs from 58%. What are the key words that we find here? How does it differ? Has it increased? Has it decreased? Or do we have any of those keywords? Or what keywords do we have? So it says that a psychologist tests whether this percentage is different today. So here's one keyword, and at the end, we also have within the question it says, is there sufficient evidence to conclude the proportion has changed since 2000? Notice how it's not given specific change. So it, it's not talking about whether, whether it's increased or decreased. It just says different. And that's where we'll say mathematically, population proportion is not equal to 0.58 or, or 58% anymore. And when we use not equal sign for the alternative hypothesis, that determines the two-tailed hypothesis structure right here.